Oh, Harry, we have had some games that have got me hot under the collar. And not just because I'm in a sweater, just because the games have been that high quality, they've been trailblazing. We go out of a good one and straight into a banger. Now then, CNZ takes on Cypher. I've got to admit, Harry, I'm a bit of a fanboy when it comes to Cypher. I love watching him play. This man is a master of Quake, and it's very enjoyable to witness. He is. He's just raw talent, fundamentally gifted, especially in mechanics as well can adapt very easily to his opponents. The last few months, it's just been a real pleasure to watch. You know, we've yeah. said it before where it's not that he was never off form. He just never really showed his true potential in some of the matches. But he really has done, especially after last week with a huge win. More and more, we're seeing more of Cypher here. And it's trailblazing, really. Like, the fact that some of the stuff he's doing, he's just starting to show more and more of the wealth of experience he has in duel and we know that he could be off form and he'll still take out most of his opponents that's how good this guy is and he's won so many tournaments in the past as well he is one of the legends in the scene and we can't really say enough about this man he's uh, not really any words to say how great he is we could go on day and night but this will be a tall order for CNZ if he wants to try and take down Cypher especially the way he's been playing the last month or two yeah, you could open up a thesaurus and run your hand down any one of the words that would come up because this man is everything in terms of, you know, how much we could sit here and celebrate his success. He's very enjoyable to watch, very aggressive. There's a lot of explosive gameplay that will come out from him. However, his opponent in CNZ. CNZ, quite interesting, obviously. He had that unfortunate fallout coming out of the Pro League before when he was bested. I think back in Poland, he was knocked out, in fact. And he actually kind of had that one stolen away from him. I remember it was on Molten Falls. It was a tragic end where he went over the edge of the map, ring outing himself and just losing everything, Harry. He's since obviously got back into the league. CNZ has been grinding where he can, trying to get results in. Issue is, this season, it's been quite flat. And that is, at this point, fair to say. He's in 19th position. We haven't seen much growth from him. And it's a shame because CNZ was looking like a really solid competitor the first time we had him step into the league. It was weird. He has been able to take quite a few maps of a lot of his opponents, especially some of the top players, but still hasn't been able to close out the series, which is the main talking point here. We can't seem to... I don't know if it's his map pool in terms of what he's good on or what he's not good on, or maybe he's not getting the map choices he actually desires but it just seems like he just can't close out any of these series as soon as you think that okay he's actually going to take the first map or sorry the first match of the eu region you think it's gonna be something completely different but it's not it's just taken so many maps of so many of the top players like tox he's lost to him 2-1 in the past and you see it in other matches as well where he's lost 2-1 i'm just trying to find another one bit like venga like even though he lost 3-0 mm. like some of the score lines were very close like took venga to like one frag difference on two out of three in the maps. It shows that he is still a very, very good player. Just can't close it out. And it's slowly but surely must be starting to annoy him a little bit. Even then, he's taking a map off Razy. So it's not like that he's absolutely getting trampled on. He's getting free owed by every single player in the EU region. It's just not really been his luck. And I think he's realized that even though he has a decent amount of dual experience, he can't really push himself. But now he's got to play against Cypher on... An, it doesn't really say what map it could be, but at least now you can see here CNZ is banned Blood Run. That's the main thing. Cyber's so banned Bell. It's probably one of the main openings CNZ probably could have had. But Awoken, Corruptor Keep, Ruins. At least with Ruins, he's got a little bit of space here. But Corruptor Keep, you know, Cypher is also. He's, well, you could say Razy's not the only one who's good at Corruptor Keep, but Cypher's also very, very good at it. Oh, yeah. Like. Looking at this veto, I, I think what we're going to get out of this, at the very least, is going to be a very enjoyable slice of Quake. This is going to be a good series. Normally, we get the best from Cypher. He's been playing so well recently, especially, I'd say, from back, obviously, at the last finals when we saw him come into that, you know, really big second place against Kilson. He's just looks night and day difference. We've seen this slow and steady improvements where now he's hit like a newfound form and he's just been grinding out results. Uh, he got a new computer as well. And I think we've really seen that actually reflect in some of the gameplay, Harry. <laughs> Since he changed over to 240 Hertz, he's like a whole new man. It, it's genuinely game changing to see the difference. And it, it's been awesome to have that classic cypher back. In terms of the veto, though, let's look at it for what it is, right? We're starting off on Awoken. That is going to be a bit of a slog. We're going to see a lot of frags coming out of that opening game. I wouldn't be surprised if we did see, really, brains burst 
versus Brawn from either two of our sides. Both of them are really good when it comes to the tactical style of play, but even better when it comes to popping head. So Awoken could be really good. Corrupted Keep as well. I mean, that speaks for itself. Sawlag versus Anarchy. That's going to be damn fun, especially when you don't have the rail. And then Ruins of Sarnaf to end it. There's a lot to digest in this series, Harry. So I suppose we should just start from the beginning. Freeman might have to. I saw there a kill on Ruins, which yeah. is... Um, I wouldn't say questionable, just a little bit bizarre because it's uh, quite a rarity to see something like that, especially with that champion on runes. But yeah, you're right though, with Cypher, since, you know, not even just a 240 hertz business, which I find quite funny, it's just like everything <laughs> mate, he's there done. There is though, like if we, if we had a graph of his improvement, there's genuinely like a noticeable jump since he got his <laughs> PC upgrade, like hands down. But it shows even if it's the smallest difference. If you go to 60 to 144, it's a huge difference. 144 to 240, it's a small difference, but a lot of people will notice it, and it's can yeah. be quite clear to the uh, to the eye. But even then, like the rotations and map position, he's changed on every, each and every single map. His cursor, he's changed so many times, even his sense. But it's nice to see the old Cypher back the last few months, and I don't think I'll ever want to see him go back to an off form. But even if he wasn't an off form, I don't think it would matter too much. But going into map number one, we are going to be focused on CNZ to start with. And we're going to see what he can do here. So he does deny Cypher a little bit in terms of the rotation. It gets a little bit of damage done with that tri -bot. He's exactly where he is. He's going to try and push straight in with the LG, but he's definitely lost a height advantage here. He's got some beautiful rockets from Cypher. Cypher's going to try and come in, clean up, which he does with the LG. First frag on the board for Cypher. Good way to open up the game. Already showing that he is a bit larger than life, and he'll charge in for the first slaughtering of the LG. Looks for a second as well as he flicks his crosshair back over, locking onto CNZ and nearly leaving him CN dead. For the meantime, he does escape though. He keeps himself alive into the matchup for now. But Cypher, he is a hard beast to avoid. It will take a lot for you to be able to actually avoid this man enough to get back into the game. Even on a champ like Galena, he'll just lurk and wait. Caught wind of the audio cue as well, so we'll adjust accordingly. Fires out the pre-fire back over towards Mega. He knows that it's still not up for a couple of seconds. So he's able to dart his way back around. And he's locking him out of the game already. Like a boa constrictor. That's what Cypher does. He likes to get control of the game and leave you isolated. Keep you out of control whilst bullying you when it comes to the actual firefights. And CNZ, he can't get any major items yet. He's just having to basically keep himself alive with the self-sustainability he's got out of those totems. Lurking back on the close angle towards the bounce pad as well. He should get the first tag off here, but it just depends on the response from Cypher. Doesn't actually commit. Knowing that we see the heavy come up, and we've also got the mega spawning in soon, he instead backs off Harry and plays it smart. Oh, the predictive rocket as well. That's huge. And Cypher now, he's kept CNZ pinned in the LG room for the last 30 to 45 seconds. Finally, he's been able to creep out. Well, top mid, but Cypher's got the stack advantage. He's been going straight in. He could be going through the telly, which he does do, but because of the rate of fire on the rail, he couldn't get another one off. Gets one, gets two, and that is CNZ down for the count. 2 0 now for Cypher. Slow and methodical. He's not getting overzealous. He's not going in for unnecessary fights. Basically just playing the standard game right now. I'm really sending it to CNZ. We're almost three minutes into the game. CNZ hasn't had that much of a chance to actually really go in for an altercation against Cypher here. Dancing his way around, avoiding that LG perfectly. CNZ can hardly get a hit off on him. Oh, Harry, devastating timing as well. Going down literally in the last tick as we see the Mega come up so he doesn't get that second wind of stack to try and keep on fighting to for now there against Cypher. Cypher as well. Look at the adjustment. The rocket. That's ridiculous. But not only that, he gets the follow-up off of the rail as well. He's hitting some sublime shots right now and just pummeling CNZ. That is wild. Absolute filth, for things the correct phrase from what we've seen so far with CNZ's walking his way up to top mid to see if he can find where Cypher could be. He's going to find him any second now. He's taking his light armor. Drops down, but will he go for the telly? Looks like he won't be. He's going to try and push for the heavy. Heavy's coming up in the next one second. He's going to try and burn it, which he will be able to, but may even take him out here as he does. CNZ was the one who managed to take that fight. It was just mere milliseconds away for Cypher to at least take that one, but it just doesn't matter. It's too late. Already nearly four minutes have passed. Cypher is up four to one. CNZ doing quite a good job 
Trying to keep Cypher a little bit under control, but as I say, that Cypher comes in, nice tri -ball, nice rail, nice LG to clean things up. Cypher now. At least to try and keep him on his toes, which he has done throughout most of this game. First rail comes in, and this is beautiful. Just nice, calm shots here from Cypher from what we've seen over the past few minutes. No, yeah, it's been really wonderful to watch so far. Solid game of Quake here on Awoken. Couple of peaks coming out as well. Back over towards Mega Spawn as we see tag after tag coming through. CNZ taking a heavy hit, but this time he does have the benefit of the timing. As we see the spawn come back up for the Mega, he'll be able to buff out some of the damage he sustained. Cheeky peek over the ledge as well. You love to see it. Issue is it doesn't actually land. Neither does the response rail from Cypher. And Cypher now trying to quickly dart back over towards Mega. Takes down the totem that will spot out. Three seconds till it's up. This is CNZ's opportunity to punish him, but he's missing the rails. That's two missed rails. He's missed the third as well. And he's eating so many shots from this tri bolt, Harry. Oh, that's devastating. Five minute warning. It really is indeed, but CNZ still got plenty of time to make something happen there. That rail was just, again, disgusting. We've pretty much got used to how Cypher has been playing now. He plays like this every single match, and it's just a real treat and delight to see the LGs will be coming on through. CNZ doesn't have to stack advantage, but it's to see what he can do. The tri -bot comes in. CNZ walks straight into that. And Cypher now looking pretty good here. The heavy will be coming up in the next few seconds, but decided to wait at the telly. Trying to work around his game sense, but it doesn't matter as he actually decided to go the other way from the LG. 171 damage from those two rockets alone, and the chase is on. Knows exactly where he is, pushing towards the LG. See if he can get a nice flank on, but it doesn't seem to happen as he misrotated. But it was a good prediction nonetheless. As CNZ just trying to keep that top mid control, but not for long as Cypher's already gagging. To try and finish him off, which he has done 7 1 now in favor of Cypher. Yeah, like Lamb to the Slaughter. He is absolutely obliterated there. Two quick follow up rockets from Cypher. The left, right, good night punch. And he's straight back in looking for more action as well. Caught slightly on the ledge there. The geometries. He was caught rocket jumping himself in. And off the back of it, he's taken a bit of a pounding due to the height advantage that CNZ had. Cypher just trying to get out of there, double jumping his way to safety. Good timing and good response on the rail. These shots that are coming out are stopping and stalling CNZ at every turn. Good rocket as well. Nice damage done here. CNZ, at least he's starting to get a bit of control back. He's getting major items for once, so we can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe versus Cypher with an equal stack. CNZ needs to get something done here, even chip away at him and then get the first frag in what feels like to be quite a long time. But this could be his opportunity here just to try and drop down and take a few high risks, but these rockets are just disgusting still as Cypher Ooh. backs away. Almost, almost, but he's still got really? the cover there, so he's all right, he's all right. It's not like... Um, what Sparty. Sparty was up to earlier, yeah. <laughs> Could have been a lot worse, but it don't matter anyway. As he's still up seven to one. Two and a half minutes left remaining. Cypher checking the most common spots that CNZ has been hiding in. Or setting up camp anyway. It looks like he's nowhere to be found. Needs to build up his light armor. Heavy is up. Seems like CNZ is just checking to see if Cypher is considering actually going for it but have you still been up for a while still waiting he might be grabbing it now which he has done but you can see cypher is just waiting for that mega another great rocket his defensive and predictive rockets have been on par this game near miss on the rail as a warning shot goes out you see the tracer whiz by and cypher Quick as you like, bouncing his way back up, goes back towards middle. And now Cypher's essentially in the end game where he can just play really slow, grind it to a halt and waste so much time. We did see a little glimpse of that totem placement as well. I love to see that up on top of the angle behind Mega. Hard for people to actually spot that one out. So that will give CNZ a bit of a tactical edge. Right now, though, in terms of aggression, oh, he was creating space. He was actually getting close and seemed like he had an opportunity to take Cypher down. But Cypher, perfect use of the rockets. Effectively, just the barge pole, keeping a couple of meters distance between the both of them and not letting him get close enough to try and take him down. 
At this point, Harry, there really isn't much time left whatsoever. Definitely not enough that CNZ can get back into the game. Awoken at this point is almost completely set and match. One minute warning. Cypher hitting every one of these high speed momentum shots as he goes through with that rail. But you can see from the item control as well, it's a little bit similar. CNZ has a little bit of a disadvantage in terms of the items, but Cypher's made every one count. 30 HP, needs to back away for now. And as you can see, 40 seconds left remaining. CNZ is trying to chase him down in any way, but walks straight into a rail shot there. Picks up the heavy. But CNZ, though, still on the case, still trying to make something happen. Boosts himself up to top mid. Is going to be hanging around for now, but how long forward? Cypher just waiting for his prey to drop down to see if he can at least clean things up as he's waiting for that mega. The mega will come up, but Cypher is still at a stack advantage, only slightly now with 10 seconds left remaining. Seeing that still trying to get that additional frag to make something happen, of course it won't, but gets Ralph back through his troubles. And that's the first map all said and done with Cypher taking that quite cleanly 7-1. Cypher slammed down. He came, he saw, he conquered on the first map. Lovely display there. Not the highest fragging game, but in terms of dominance and the fact that it looked like he was in control for pretty much the entire thing, it was definitely a landslide victory there for Cypher, the Belarusian bruiser, as he walks away with another win under his belt. Obviously, that is just a map, Harry. We do have two more to go in the series. So coming straight off the back of Awoken, we're going to be going as Corrupted Keep. You do remove the rail. That is a big asset to either of these players that's completely taken out of circulation now going into the next map. Difference is, though, with the footwork we saw coming out from Cypher with those rockets and with his LG use, I don't know if it's really going to bother him. I don't think it will. You know, in terms of corrupt to keep it's a, one of the smallest maps in the pool probably if not the smallest it's one of the fastest and most impactful and normally it's the players who have got the fastest game sense and that killer instinct to combine with it just add its insult to injury with corrupted keep if you play with someone who's like like you can see it, it's like fast chess really you know if you manage to make the right mistake at the right time or make the same movements at the right times and do it at a fast pace then you can really change things up. It's uh, quite mastery, really. You know, that's why Razy so good at it, because he's got the game sense, he's got the killer instincts, and that's why you see players like Venga who are also good. They may not have the dual experience of 10 or 15 years, but they've got the speed and momentum to try and topple them without the rail and with the map geometry of how small it is. There you go. IGN. It's like chest with guns. Pretty that's much. just the, uh, the definition <laughs> for that matchup. It, it kind of was in a way. We saw, uh, you know, a lot of game ending plays there that were coming out from Cypher the entire way through. He certainly seemed like he was con in control of that metaphorical board, Harry. Can he repeat that again going into uh, Corrupted Keep? Probably, yeah. I, I, I don't feel like the form's going to drop off. I don't see any reason why it would. He's been ripping heads off all over the course of that first map. Going into Keep, I feel like this is just going to be more of the same. The Drill Sergeant needs to have a resurgence. He needs to have it soon. He's got to start beating that drum. Because right now he's being beaten by Cypher. Cypher on Sorlag as well. So the big girl's out on parade. And she's packing a shot. Each. She's going to introduce it to CNZ with the first opening tag going out. And makes her move back over towards the heavy. Slams that on her chest. And Cypher's ready to run. Nice. Of course, there's a lot of strategy ah, to corrupt to keep. Died. A lot of it is actually more based on game sense and instinct due to how fast paced this matchup can be. But both players have tied things up. Beautiful LG from Cypher, even when CNZ took that mega. Still almost taken down. He could go for the trader if he's quick enough. He's realized that he could be going for the heavy. Decides to contest it. Prioritizes the bigger stack. Completely understandable there. And he's now on the hunt. Bit comes out, catches him a little bit, but CNZ trying to work out what to do here. Tried to go for the health orb in the corner, but it's just a little bit too late. Probably about half a second to a second away. That's all of a sudden done as CNZ goes straight for the mega. And now Cypher is going to try and corner him off and contest that heavy if he can, which he will do. The inject comes in, he will pick up the heavy, and Cypher's decided to back away, which is definitely the right motive. 2-2 already on keep. 
Not exactly what I expected coming in off the back of the first game, but it's good. It's a nice position to be in. It means we're really going to get a juicy affair out of this one, and hopefully it will develop into a bit of a slobber knock. That drop coming down, though. We see the response. Cypher taking a ton of damage, but he was giving as good as he gets. Unfortunately for him, though, CNZ just takes an extra hit and keeps rolling with it, taking it to a 3-2 to two split on the scoreline already. So the carnage has not been quelled. It's not been calmed. It's still going to give us more and more of this chaotic aggression between the two of them. Cypher steps up on the ledge, gazing over towards the and Zed, gets a couple of warning shots out. Steen Zed trying to reply back with the LG, Harry, but he's not quite connecting him. Instead, he fancy the nails. On the drop down, Cypher picking up the Mega, getting away. The Toxic doing so much damage as well from that sore lag spit. Over time, those globules just burning down C and Zed and giving more info back to Cypher. And CNZ, he's on a bit of a back foot when it comes to his stack right now. He needs to keep hitting shots like that to create enough space and make it easy when they get into a fully-fledged fight. Because right now, the health advantage is way in favor of Cypher. And the rocket seems to be on his side too. Turns round, obliterates him, unloading onto him with that Hellion Salvo and closing the gap 3-3. He wants a bit more though. He doesn't want to just close the gap. He wants to extend his own lead. Gets that four frag, cleaning up into the game. The claws are truly out here for Sorlag tonight. They really are. Even though CNZ made it take a huge amount of damage earlier, the LG still comes in. It's so weak. The heavy machine gun comes out. Nice cleanup duty from Cypher. What I like about CNZ is the fact that he tried to pin Cypher in those narrow corridors if he's at a massive stack disadvantage. And it almost worked and paid off for him here, but the spawn kill comes in. We're about to finish him. Yes, he will. And the main thing is CNZ stood just out of range to kind of not take so much damage from that shotgun, which is a uh, perfect play there. That's what you see CNZ waiting for him to go for the telly, which he has done. Does have the inject, which you'll initiate straight away. And look at these nail shots, Jack. He's taking so much damage. Waiting for him to drop down after he picks up the two health orbs, which he has done. He's going to go for the light, and now it'll go for heavy. But I'm sure CNZ is definitely going to be on the warpath. Going to try and chase him down if he can. Grabs it. Not really much too, too much contestion there, you could say, from Cypher. I think he expected him to maybe sit back a little bit more. But looking good for CNZ. Yeah, it's a nice spot to be in. He's still hitting these fadeaway shots as well. So every time Cypher starts to build up the speed and the courage to bounce his way in like an aggressive 18 wheeler, CNZ's there to slap him on the nose and send him back from once he came, slowing him down now massively. Cypher, low on stack overall. Spotted CNZ on the rotation as he was making his move back over towards heavy, but he doesn't attack off the back of it. Instead, Cypher is just opting to scavenge around and build back up his stack. CNZ now with the heavy, Thrown into his backpack, he'll start to make his move. Setting course back over towards Cypher. Repositioning greatly and he's keeping him guessing. It just depends who can outmaneuver one another as he starts to skirt his way around. See, instead has the injection for a critical time. Will he be forced out to use it though? They're leaving themselves in a stalemate here, Harry. See, instead's barely alive and having to just buff out the damage. Slap on a few band-aids in the form of a mega. Now make his move in. He wants to leave Cypher with stitches or at least sleep him with the fishes as he dives over on the ledge, gets up close to personal Cypher. He'll finish himself off in quite a flamboyant fashion. The body there for the saw lag. Not really enjoying that one. He's down a frag, five to four as we hit the halfway point. But the rockets come in and Cypher loses that one. CNZ extending his lead further, picks up the Mega, is now going to try and contest the Heavy, picks up the Light. He's just taking everything at this moment in time. And he's got the Inject. Make things worse. Got the Heavy, got the Mega, got the Light. He's got the Inject to back himself up if necessary. But even then, Cypher, picking up all the Health Orbs and Lights he can find, Basically, pretty, well, you could say pretty much picking up scraps. The inject comes in. Nice damage on from the first rocket. Nice one from the second. But Cypher's still waiting for him. He knows that Mega's coming up. Manages to pick it up in the end. And CNZ is the one on the back foot here. Nice chunk of damage again. But it's just not enough. He needs to heal up. But he hasn't got the opportunity. Beautiful shots with the machine gun there from Cypher. As he's now trying to find where he's gone on the spawn. He has found him, but it's left him for now. Four minutes left on this one. The drop down. CNZ popped off the Cypher. Clearly showing that he's starting to mean business as he comes around the corner quick on the draw. Unloads onto CNZ. 
And now goes back in for more as well. Picks up the rocket launcher, trying to slay from far away. Slamming those shots down into C and Z to leave him sleeping on the DECK. But for now, he stands tall. The game is at least tied. 6-6. Six, six. Backing off for a second, at least being able to rebuild himself back up, waiting towards those hourglasses and the close walk towards the statue. He does have his spit ready. Injections also prepared on the side of CNZ. So we could have quite a hectic fight on our hands when they get back into the next encounter. Issue is, look at the ammunition for Cypher. His arsenal's still weak. He's not really packing that much heat. He's got six rockets left. At least he's been able to pick back up the LG as well. So it's another bit of use that he can bring into the fights, especially when he's building up his stack. Now he's got that fully stacked Sawlag. He can charge back in. He can go into the unknown and probably walk away with the victory as he'll walk over back towards CNZ, chasing him around the corner. Pit a patter of shots as he fires out the pre-fire, but none of them will connect he scares him though keeping him back far enough that he'll get another uncontested mega here towards statue i love this so from cypher not only is he taking all the items but he's double checking on the lights to see where he could be and just making sure he can contest everything in his power and even though cnz just took that heavy will he be able to get away with it this is the next question though and it's going to chase him down beautiful rocket jump from there and cleans him up with the lg cypher's just been all over him taking both of the items back and forth, checking the light armors to see where he could be in case he's taking it or not. And look at this though, it's just for like CNZ is just a little bit out of place here. Even though he's gone through the telly, Cypher could have easily taken him down there, but it's decided to rotate a little bit further back, clean things up, two minutes left, and CNZ has still got plenty of time, but just needs to contest these items. Eight minutes in. Cypher, the Pied Piper, trying to lead CNZ off a ledge. Let's see if he can. Right now, turns the corner and turns the tides back on him as he'll strike with the LG, punishing him once more and setting an even bigger margin between the both of them. It's now nine to six, and time really is trying to tick away. He's low on HP, but it won't matter. He's still able to stand tall, slays him again, dropping it down to a 10 to six score line, and gets out of there, back over towards the heavy, so we can pick it back up and return to the fight immediately. That's the benefit of being that big girl, of being Sorlag. You can take way more punches than what Anarchy is able to throw out, and he's just bullying him off all of the major items. Once again, that's another mega that will be picked up for Cypher. Goes in with a shot. He, oh, serving up some sublime buckshot as they'll introduce him to Big Papa Pump, taking him down with both barrels. Finally, after such... It felt like such a long time with the spree Cypher went on. CNZ finally took him down, but it could be too little too late. He needs to clean up now. needs to take this battle and try and... Saw himself out a little bit, but it's going to be too little too late here as CNZ has decided to back down, get the LG. 30 seconds left on the clock, still needs five frags. Doable, I'm going to say very highly unlikely here, especially if Cypher comes in like that with that kind of stack and rockets. Waiting for the next heavy, and that's pretty much said and done. That is definitely going to be the second map in favour of Cypher. Just depends on what the scoreline, sorry, the scoreline will be over the next 10 seconds if you can clean up CNZ, which he has done. 14 to 7. Can't complain really. CNZ kept it so close and up to the mark throughout most of this match until the 8 minute mark. But Ben Cypher was just on an absolute roll. Took every item, was challenging all the lights even when it wasn't necessary just to try and feed himself information. Kind of detective work to see where CNZ could be. But that was a great game from Cypher there. That was lovely. Really, really good game. Quality matchup. Obviously, a lot closer there from CNZ as well, proving that he can actually go toe to toe amongst him and giving us quite a hearty game between the both of them. In the end, though, Cypher peeling out much further ahead, really started to create distance in the last couple of minutes. And it just goes to show how damn good he can be, even without the rail being in circulation. He didn't need it. He was just running into those fights, headstrong, very confident. Great use of the rockets and the LG, Harry. And that, that was basically it. That, there was no response from CNZ towards those final few seconds. Cypher's LG, especially with the hitbox of Anarchy, was quite a large percentage. I think it was like in the yeah. high 40s, if I remember rightly. And I just felt like he was barely missing. His tracking aim was very, very good, especially on such a small opponent. And we've got to remember what CNZ was up to. Like, he kept it very, very close all the way to, I would say, up to, it was at least the eight minute mark. But with things that were ciphers, with the item control and having it timed out really well, he was keeping on the lights constantly. All the players do that anyway, but he was always double checking more often, knowing that at some point, somehow, some way, especially as an anarchy, he's going to be going for those lights. 
at some point. But you saw Ren, he didn't really go for it. CNZ kept himself as unorthodox as possible. But there's only so much he could have done when you've got a stack like that, especially with Sawlag. It was very, very difficult for CNZ. The only thing I can say about CNZ is the fact that when, when he was at a stack disadvantage, he was staying in those close quarters, those close combat kind of corridors where he will get the first rocket off and then we'll probably see what happens afterwards and did a huge chunk of damage, but it just wasn't enough. Cypher was just all over him over those last two minutes. No, he was. He, he really was. And now I suppose you're left in this position, right? Back fully up against the corner. At this point, you can probably take the pressure off you if you are seeing dead and just play a little bit more loose, really go out there and have some fun with this one as the final map in the series because Cypher's already walked away with a W here, right? You've got the two maps. You want to go and just lock it down and get the third. For him, being literally in third place as well, this is a massive result to get in this late into the season. Cypher's been going from strength to strength and... The only issue is this one's a bit spicy. It's not really, uh, you know, a normal matchup compared to the, the champion picks, Harry. We do have a kill coming out for Cypher. So he's sticking to those thick, heavy champions. And then we've got Aizen in play for CNZ. So uh, a little bit out of the basic place. Definitely indeed. I would probably say with Cypher now, I think it was two points ahead of the hang in the overall standings on the global leaderboard. So if he does win this 3-0, then he's obviously going to say two points clear. Yeah. If he doesn't, then it could be a different story. I think Dehang will probably be ahead. We'll have to see. I'm sure Dehang will be watching this anyway <laughs> to see if he does drop the last and final map. But the way Cypher's playing right now, it's it's quite hard to say he actually would. Especially on Ruins, he's got Aizen. Actually, I see NZ with Aizen, so he can defend himself if he wants to try and pick up the heavy or contest the heavy in any way, especially if he gets there first. But the kill for Cypher, I want to know what he's up to. Why has he done it? Why has he brought it out? What tricks are up his sleeve? Because this man doesn't do things for no reason. There's always a thought process behind the champion picks that he brings out. What I was going to say, this is the reason why he wanted to open it up with a kill coming in. Really starting to play off the back of the aggressive, large starting stack that he has. Issue is, it was brilliant from the get-go, but CNZ just bides his time. Waiting in the corner, gritting his teeth and grin and bearing his way back through. Peeks out with the perfect timing with the rail, sends him off and shuts him down on that first pick. Gaining an advantage early on. CNZ leading with one frag now over Cypher. Has to reposition once again. He's taking a ton of damage and he's got to play off the major items. That is the worrying predicament you run into though. Although CNZ's got the benefit of little Timmy, the triumphant turret that he can pull out at times to try and give him some area of effect denial, he doesn't have that huge stack that Keel has available to him. And you can see now, this is the difference. Cypher, he's big. Oh, he's confident. And he's broken his way through CNZ with the drop down row. That's a lovely little opener to tie up the scoreline. A minute in, and they're already starting to pop off here into the final map. CNZ is just taking his time now. Cypher was probably kicking himself knowing that there was only two MG shots away from taking CNZ down, but it doesn't matter. All in the past, Cypher with a very good stack waiting for Cypher to drop down, which he has done. The grenades come out. A lot of damage done. That was beautiful and very precise from what we saw there. CNZ doesn't get the spawn he would be so hopeful for. But the turret will come out anyway. He's going to do his best to try and contest this mega. With the turret in play, he could probably tank it a little bit. The turret is gone. And so will he. The mega is now going to be given to Cypher. Not something CNZ, I'm sure, <laughs> surely did not want here. But it doesn't matter. It's giving away the mega. Taking one rail. The shots come out. The second one comes through again. Beautiful stuff from Cypher once more. Man. You can have a close start. And you can show that, you know, you, you can definitely get into the game. But as soon as Cypher gets on a roll, he's like a kid on a bike at the top of a hill, Harry. He just can't stop himself. He's just bombing down that hill as fast as you like. And he's a danger to himself. And that's what we're seeing from Cypher. Peeking back out with the rail as well. Actually taking a face full of damage this time around. Busting his lip wide open. He's got to dive back and try and stay alive. Creates some space between the two of them. Picks up that light armor to begin to replenish himself as well. Or little cheeky spam with the pineapple straight down the hole, making fruit salad down towards the heavy and keeping that space between the both of them. Obviously, he's already got a nice lead into the game, but there's no reason to throw that away if he's not going into a healthy fight. He only wants to square up when he absolutely has to, but CNZ has other ideas in mind. He's trying to make some bread, comes around the corner, 
and he will overpower him. Pump a nickel punish gun, that's what they call it, Harry. <laughs> sure do indeed, but he's just trying to take so much damage here. CNZ ties things up, gets the heavy as well. Looking to see where he could go next. It's decided to drop down and looks like Cypher will be going for that rail and LG. CNZ's holding top of the map, getting ready to contest that mega, grabs it. Items are well and truly different in terms of timing, so at least he can pick up both when necessary. It's not like they're too tight in terms of timing. But he's still got that tight as well, so Cypher even attempts to contest it. He's not going to have too much luck. He's got a turret and a heavily stacked CNZ to deal with. But as you can see, it throws another one to us to throw it in play. But I'm not going to lie though, Cypher's been doing really well considering using a kill for Ruins, which is very odd. And you can see why though, like, you know, there's some of the stuff he's been doing, so keeping in those narrow spaces. CNZ is playing with death at this point. He needs to back away, he needs to restack, restabilize once more. He's going to pick up the light, get the health orbs. Gonna see, was, was considering thinking about the heavy, but is waiting for Cypher to jump up on that jump pad so he gets the LG advantage. But it just wasn't to be. Here's him waiting to get that first rocket off. It was so close, he was so. You could see he was a little bit tempted, but the Mega is still up. Delayed it quite a bit. Cypher's finally picked up the Mega, and he's also quite heavily stacked. So this is well, he's got the first rail, puts the turret down, and should be able to get this heavy. We're lurking in towards the heavy room. <laughs> Pineapple's whizzing by and seeing dead. Knocked back into the heavy. Slams it on his chest. Readies the rifle there on the rail as he gets the flick back off. And takes down Cypher once again. That's a clean frag to find. And for the first time now, he takes the lead here into this matchup as well. He got the opening pick into the game. Since then, he's been trailing on the back foot. Now, finally, he can build once more. He can start to create some space between the both of them. Booping him up into the air and then slamming down onto him with a 360 rail as well as he jumps across the corner. There comes Timmy the turret as that automaton will take down and stop Cypher dead in his tracks. He thought he was going to get a frag ahead, get an advantage, but no, he's been left bodied. Free brick, Harry. Hashtag free brick. Hashtag free brick indeed. That was so unfortunate. It's good time of placement anyway, even though he left it for the heavy. The LGs both come through. Cypher again. 2 HP does the damage, gets the frag. Lovely. Man. Nearly six minutes now. Cypher climbing his way back up, doing the parkour on the kill to get himself towards the mega health. Peeking out with the rail. Shot's gonna whiz by. Wait in to see if a head's gonna pop up like an eagerly waiting hairdresser. He's ready to try and cut some hairs clean off. He won't get the opportunity to do though. Instead, he has to reposition. Backs out. He is low on stack as well. No armor. So he's got to get himself a couple of lights, see what he can find around the map, and begin to hoover them up like some kind of item hoover. Item Hoover, both these players have been contesting the items really well. CNZ, as you can see, just taking the lead. Gonna try and pin him down. The turret's already there waiting for him. That was a beautiful setup, by the way. Like having the turret just precisely in that spot, it's not only is it help you for anyone to drop him down on the jump pad to try and contest it, but especially if you spawn on the the uh the heavy stairs too, it's just a real, real burden. It's not the sort of thing you want to try and entice yourself in. But CNZ's taken a lot of damage here. Cypher's very tempted to, you could say, drop down from there. Backed away for now. Will decide to prioritize the Mega. Throws another turret down. And it looks like he's taking a huge amount of damage here. Decides to take a huge risk. But once what? more, the trades have come in. It's just so back and forth here, Jack. Mate. That's ridiculous. Eight to six. Every time it looks like we're starting to get a normal narrative given to us between these two pros, they just throw a weird spanner into the mix. They retcon some of the story and they keep us guessing. Right now, pineapple after pineapple comboed with a nail sandwich was being given to CNZ, but he hated it. He didn't like the taste of it. He throws it back in the face of Cypher and takes him down once more. Now really putting himself 
into a luscious lead. It's nine to six. We're getting down to crunch time as well. We're almost to eight minutes. If Cypher's coming back into the game, he needs to start fighting back soon. Darts his way across. Two near misses from CNZ rails. You gotta hit those. You gotta keep him back. There's four seconds till Mega spawns in. At this point, he's conceding the Mega, but actually Cypher doesn't want to wait for it. He pushes out, uses that aggressive prowess to force CNZ down. They both split the major items apiece. Issue is, it's all about timing, Harry. This is the dream for CNZ. He can waltz his way around and happily burn time off the clock. For Cypher, you have to make decisive plays. He needs to instigate a fight in the next couple of seconds. Looks like that Tamit managed to slow down Cypher only a little bit, but you can see he's definitely on the hunt. Only a minute and a half left. If CNZ drops this frag, it will also get taken down on spawn, possibly at the light armor, but it doesn't matter. Like, even considering what I was just talking about, the rail and the LG gives him the upper hand, gets another rail. He's going to try and look for the second if he can. Rocket's dropping down. He's going to try and fit one more in. No, he won't, Ooh. but Cypher will definitely. But then again, Cypher, he does have to stack, but he needs to get, try and get four flags in one minute. It's highly unlikely, but it is Cypher we're talking about. We've seen plenty of weird things in the past but cnz's got the turret he's not got the best of stacks but i'm sure he can try and keep cypher at bay if he keeps chipping away at the damage one more shot should do it but the turret has been a bit of a nuisance as he turned back and cypher taken down again as cnz now leads 11 to 6. cnz doing his best rogue impression there with a the backstab slaughters his way through cypher and at that point, that's it. I mean, you know, this this is good night for Cypher. His hopes and dreams have been taken away. Seems like he's a little bit frustrated, <laughs> obviously. Don't get that from his point of view, but I can't imagine it was uh, <laughs> the happiest move. As he's, he's firmly up Struggle Street now. That is going to be the end of the matchup. It will go 11 to 5. And for Cypher, you know, I, I can understand it. You feel like you would be kicking yourself a little bit because you could have had that flawless 3-0, right? And he would have kept himself above the hang in the standings. Issue is, he doesn't get that result anymore, Harry. Dahang's probably going to overtake him now because he's only got the two-map win. It's still a series win, but it's not the additional points. Yeah, it is a shame, but never mind, though. He, he had a few opportunities there to try and extend his own lead when he was beating CNZ at the time. He had the top control. I love the ballsy plays he made with the high-risk maneuvers, pushing for that heavy, even though the turret was down. There's so many trades happen. It was just a real shame for Cypher. But at the end of the day, he's taken the series, so I'm sure he's going to be quite happy with that anyway. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to have to call this suicide pact. Is it like, what, pulling a Sparty? <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe. <laughs> we could do. Uh, I, I don't know, man. I get, well, the thing is, originally, it would have been a Sib, wouldn't it? If it was back from, like, stage one, that was Sib's signature <laughs> move. But I don't know. It's it's all changed, Harry. It's all changed. We're in new horizons and new territory. Uh, but talking of new horizons, definitely a, a map upset win there coming in towards the end from CNZ. He snuck that one in. So, obviously, you can see why Cypher would be a bit frustrated about it. It did feel like, as well... You know, I, I hate to say he threw away the game, Harry, but it seemed like he should have won this, truly. You know, around that sort of seven-minute mark, I can't remember the play exactly, but it, it did seem like Cypher let it slip, took some of, I'd say, unnecessary fights. I think it was just maybe a little bit of overconfidence in the last few minutes. A couple were debatable. I think at that point mm. when it was 9-6, he chose his choices wisely. He knew that even if it's at a similar stack, it's worth the risk because with Ruins, it can be a bit weird. For example, like if he respawned at the light area, he you never know, he could be could just hide in the tri vault room the whole entire time. There's a lot of places you can hide on ruin, but then again, it can be quite easy to spawn trap. And I felt like Cypher knew that he had to take a few risks there, which were debatable, but in, nonetheless, I'm pretty sure most other people would have done the exact same. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. It was a good map overall, though. We saw a lot of strengths coming out from Cypher. Like, literally, just, just ruins aside, Awoken and Corrupted Keep were both brilliant maps in terms of his prowess on the server. He looked damn good. He was pulling out some classic moves, showing us the true Cypher that we love to see when he's playing some flawless Quake. But that is the end of that series for now. We do see Cypher walking away with the win, but not the full 3-0. So it might actually hurt him a little bit. We'll see how that affects the standings at the end of the day. But it's not the end of the day yet we still have two more games to come up tonight going into quite possibly the best game of the night next it's Razy versus Kilson. it's always a grudge match when these two play it's exciting to watch definitely come back for this one after the break